The Archiad template has come a long way since we spoke last, so let me show you exactly how far we've come. In the last video, I mentioned that the pen sets weren't quite right and they needed quite a lot of work. So that's the first thing I've worked on throughout the last few weeks. What you'll see is I've started to transition everything away from the main screen and onto the right hand side into a resources folder. So on the right hand side in the layout book, you'll see resources and underneath resources, you'll see pen sets and pen sets explained. So pen sets explained is basically a PDF extract from Gideon's desk. Gideon's desk is the be all end all ARCAD helpline basically that allows you to understand ARCAD in depth every single update. So this is completely courtesy of Gideon. It is an amazing document that he's made over the years. I take absolutely no credit for it. However, the color standards and the pen sets have been set up to use this information. So if we go down to the bottom and open up our brand new pens and colors palette, you'll see I have two different color palettes. I have the Tomage black, white, and color, which is what I predominantly will be using for my own purposes. And of course, the Tomage international color. So if you are wanting to document in color, if you're trying to coordinate with other consultants and other services, that is the color standard for you with some slight adjustments for my standards on the last three rows. The last three rows are an identical copy of the black and white version. This basically just allows you to use the black and white standard, but still have some specific color for things like electrical, plumbing, gas, services, landscaping, etc. So just a basic, basic color palette is more than enough to get a high quality set of architectural documents going. I have, of course, left all of the standard Archicad pen sets in here in case you do wish to use them for any reason, but the two down below are the custom elements created. Just like pen sets, I've started to move everything away from the main screen and onto the resource section. So the first thing you see is parking. If we double click on parking, we'll see a 2D and a 3D section, which will slowly grow and slowly expand. This resources section will be the host of all of the favorite library parts, as well as some creative 2D annotations for things that might be needed. So for instance, the 2D annotation of the Australian standards Akrod Bay is an easy drag and drop into whatever shape you need. I'm still working on making the 3D object perfect. As you can see, there's a couple elements that are really causing me grief. So for instance, the symbol itself, I can't get rid of whilst keeping the 45 degree lines. So I have to keep playing with that. Hence the big red whip work in progress. However, once that's done, you'll be able to go into it, you'll be able to access it and use it in your own personal projects. Now, something that I'll bring up that one of you guys actually commented on the last video was the Australian standards for the disability or the ACROD parking. Now, I've read through those standards page and page and page. I've read through all of the subsequent standards relating to this and still can't find a clear answer. So I have reached out to some private certifiers to hopefully give me the answer in the next video. What you'll notice is that the clear width of this parking bay is 2.4. That is a requirement in the Australian standard. However, what is unclear is if it's 2.4 from center to center of the line or 2.4 clear of the lines, so plus the 100 millimeter line itself. For me personally, we've been documenting 100 mil lines clear, so 2.4 absolutely clear, because it just gives people a little bit more space. The Australian standards are 2.4 by 5.4 for typical Australian parking bays. But as vehicles get larger, as turning circles get worse, as people require more and more space, typically it is standard practice for me at least to go to 2.5 by 5.5. There are some councils in Western Australia that request that over and above the sta Australian standards. So right now they're left as 2.4 by 5.4. However, personally, I really love to see it at 2.5 by 5.5. It just gives a little bit more relief. Now, the biggest component of this update is not the resources section. It's not the pen sets explained. It's in fact the time spent creating all of the custom wall types and composites. So if we were to go back to a ground floor plan and select our wall and then decide we want to change our wall type, you'll see that I have nine folders with multiple wall types inside every single folder. Each one of them has a unique structure and each one of them is broken down to the general Australian standards that we have here. Not everything's perfect, not everything cross-checked, so there's still lots to do but you'll see I've started importing as much as I can. As always, I've left the standard ARCAD items in there. I've just dragged and dumped them in. But for instance, if we look at our composites and start on our existing walls, we'll see that we have our existing walls, B1, so existing wall, 01, dash one. So it's the version one of that same wall because these are all 
existing walls very, very generic. I've just gone through and renumbered them one through to five of 801. The naming method is relatively self-explanatory. It typically defines the overall width of the structure, except in the case of existing walls. Existing walls is the overall width of the wall because we have absolutely no idea what plasterboard thickness it is, etc., without actually cutting and doing destructive works. So if we're doing a site measure, for instance, and we measure the wall as 90 millimeters overall, give it a knock, we might find out that it's a timber frame wall or it's a solid brick wall. However, we don't know if it's 10 mil plaster, if it's 13 mil plaster, if that's standard single course brickwork, if it's two course brickwork, if it's block work, if it's concrete filled, unless we have documentation to support it, we're really guessing. So that's why I've left it as a generic blank slate. 90 mil overall, it's just one single component. Same with all the rest of them. If we move into our timber frame walls, we'll see we have a couple more options. TF01, which has three variations, and then TF02, which once again has three variations. Each one is of course slightly different. 01 is a 90 mil wall, 02 is 120, and 03 is a 140 millimeter wall. These are standard timber framing sizes here in Australia for timber frame walls. And of course the next line is P plus P, meaning plaster plus plaster. So as you can see, we have plasterboard on both sides of the timber frame wall. And in this scenario, it's direct stick to the 90 mil stud. The last element of the title is uninsulated. Very, very self-explanatory. Dispersion is uninsulated. 01-2 is insulated. And then 01-3 I've left as insulated with plaster internal only. Now, I haven't gone ahead and created a furring channel in the front and then a fiber cement sheet, for example, because I'm still unclear how I wanna go about using the cladding. Typically in practice, I'll use the 4D library for all of my claddings, which automatically creates my 35 mil batten and then it creates the actual cladding system I wanna use in full 3D. So if I'm using something like a James Hardy Stria product, I will see all of those grooves and lines in the Stria cladding. So I'm still looking into that, hence why TF01-3 is as it is and the rest of the program follows suit. What you'll notice is all of these have been set up with 10 mil plaster. So timber walls, 10 mil plaster, brick walls, 10 mil plaster, block walls, 10 mil plaster. Now, it is significantly easier to use these elements and then change them to 13 mil plaster if you need them in the specific occasions. Alternatively, I can also go ahead and create all of these folders again for a 13 mil plaster option. Unless you're doing lots of commercial, it's unlikely you're gonna be using 13 mil in a residential property. Brickwork, just like timber frame, we've got some awesome options. Of course, double brick standard 90 mil blocks on both sides. Then we move up to our 250 with our 110 bricks on one side. Now, this might be a unique brick that you're using. It might be a face brick. It might be the requirement from the engineer. Either way, we have 110 mil on our internal side, which I've just realized is on the wrong bit. It should be on our external side. So I'll go ahead and change that quickly. Next, we have our 270 brickwork. So if we're using 110s and 110s, potentially we have extremely high ceiling heights where we need to move up to that level of brickwork. We have our 190 double brick, which is literally two bricks stacked together to create a solid 190 block worth wall. Of course, we have our 300 millimeter cavity filled walls and then our single bricks for inside both 90 and 110. For the block work walls, I've gone in and created something a little bit more specific for Australia, potentially a little bit more specific for Western Australia too, depending on what suppliers you have in your state. So for example, when you scroll down this list, you'll see in brackets, I've actually documented Besser blocks and Versalock blocks. Now, if you're unsure what these are, Besser blocks, for instance, are standard concrete block works here in Western Australia that are cavity filled with concrete. They're a very typical retaining wall element, which is used for basically every project that has a retaining wall. It's a very cheap and cost-effective way to do things. But what is coming into the ranks and what we've seen used quite a lot is our Versalox. So Versalox, instead of being a 90 mil and a 140 block work wall, are 150 and 190 block work walls. It's very similar to the H blocks at 190 by 390, but it doesn't need any mortar in between the blocks. Versa locks are interconnecting like Lego. I have found that they banana a little bit over large spans of walls. So if you're going for like a four meter basement wall, you're gonna see all of your block works waving and wobbling. It's not the best if you're looking for an aesthetic finish. However, if you're doing low planter boxes, if you're rendering them, that's a perfect block. 
It's super user friendly. Most people can lay them once the first row is done. And then you're just running Rio up the middle and pouring concrete as you go. But just like everything else, we have our Versa locks, which have render and plaster, cavity filled. We have render only. We have render and render, etc., etc. You get the point. Moving on to our concrete walls, I've left this relatively generic for the time being. Concrete walls for me personally are mainly warehousing and industrial elements. So they're relatively raw finishes. If we're doing warehousing mixed with offices, then we'll need a fairing channel and we will need insulation and plasterboard, but it's all very much dependent on the energy requirements. So for the time being, I've just left it as the most generic concrete panels. Now I haven't specified these as precast or tilt up. I haven't gone to that depth. It's just 125 through to 250. And of course we'll increase that if you ever need it. Brick veneer walls are very common here in Western Australia as are reverse brick veneer walls. They're becoming more and more common, especially in Perth because reverse brick veneer is the absolute perfect construction methodology for energy efficiency. Regardless, very self-explanatory. 110 mil block on the outside, 90 mil timber on the inside. This one is rendered and plastered as you can see with the R and the P, and it's simply uninsulated. Now there's a probability that the energy assessor may require the cavity to be insulated with some foam, with some sort of rigid board, it depends on the project, but it's relatively easy to change if you need it. Reverse brick veneer is identical, but what I've done with reverse brick veneer is actually included a 16 mil fiber cement sheet on one side and left the plaster board off for the face brick on the alternative. Now, the reason I've done this is because one, I still haven't decided what I'm going to do for the external cladding. I want to make it extremely easy to use and yet highly detailed for you guys. I don't think this is the method I'm going to use, but it's there as a starting point. Steel frame, I've gone ahead and documented mainly the Rondo system. So 51, 64, 76, 92 and 150. Most steel frame is roughly in that range. However, this is more so the Rondo wall systems. Next on the list is of course our planter boxes. All I've really created here is a 140 concrete blockwork wall with waterproofing and render. So on the outside, we have our render. On the inside, we have our waterproofing membrane, which might be a millimeter or two thick. It might be more depending on what waterproofing membrane class you require. And then I've got our waterproofing protection board. So we've got our membrane, we've got our protection board, and then we go with our soil. Last but not least on this extremely over the top wall composite systems was the firewall. Now I've only created one firewall to start. There's so many firewalls that need to be created and they will be added as time goes on. However, at the moment I've included the James Hardy smart wall, which is a ridiculously easy timber framing wall system that allows you to create duplexes or anything of the like without having fire check or any other fire rated plasterboard. It's simply a nine millimeter villa board and then timber stud with insulation and cavity airspace. Overall, it has been proven to meet a 60-60-60 fire rating from both sides. What you will notice on this one is I've done it a little bit differently. So the truth of the matter is the timber stud is actually 90 millimeters. It is not 30 millimeters, don't get that wrong. It is 90 plus 60. However, the 60 millimeter of mineral wool sits on the inside of that timber frame as per the James Harder installation guidelines. So if you're looking at a cross section of this wall, you would see that insulation perfectly aligned and then timber framing fitting out the front. If you would actually cut a section the other way and open it up, those timber 90 mil studs would be sitting in the opposite axis and they would be at 450 or 600 centers with that mineral wall infield. Now, in addition, a lot of you guys have also asked for this to be released as an ARCAD 27 version. I will release it as a 27 version. I'm simply going to go out, go file, save as, as version 27. I'm not going to test anything in version 27. I'm not going to see if it works. So please let me know in the comments if the 27 version has some bugs when I re-export as a previous version. However, I'm hoping it carries over relatively well. Anyway, that's all for me team. Thank you so much for watching. If you want a copy of the template, make sure you check out the Patreon in the description down below. Make sure you smash the subscribe button while you're there. And like always, I'll see you next week.